Good afternoon, Dr. Chen and Dr. Avashni. My name is Du Chen. Today, I am going to present about the background of smart parking system. Smart parking system is, uh, is used to detect the empty car parking slot by using the camera, counting sensors, or in-ground smart parking sensors to help the driver to find the empty parking slot. Next, I am going to present about the Internet of Things. The IoT is a network of physical objects embedded with sensors, software, and other technologies to connect and exchange data with other devices and systems over the internet. These devices range in complexity from common household items to sophisticated industrial tools. For example, the user can switch on the light bulb, air conditioner, and car just by using a smartphone application. After that, I'm going to talk about how smart parking implement the IoT. Smart parking development entails the collection of an IoT that transmits information about available and occupied parking spaces via mobile application or website. Each parking slot has an IoT gadget which includes sensors and microcontrollers. <coughs> it can be installed in each parking slot to detect the availability of the slot for the users. The IoT sensors will use an ultrasonic wave to detect the distance to something. For example, if the IoT sensors are placed on the ceiling of the parking slot, then the distance can be measured from the top to the bottom. But when there is a car entering the parking slot, the new distance between the IoT sensors on the ceiling and the vehicle is measured. Now, I'm going to talk about the advantages of smart parking. The first advantage is to reduce the traffic and pollution. As fewer cars are required to drive around and look for parking slots, then the traffic flow will be improved. Furthermore, there are about 1 million barrels of wine wasted a day around the world when the driver is looking for an empty parking slot. Next, the second advantage is increased safety. The reduced street stretching traffic also can help to reduce accidents by ensuring the drivers maintain their concentration rather than browsing for parking slots. Lastly, smart parking also brings benefits to the company that use the system because the parking lot can be filled up efficiently, which allows the company to make the most of their space. Now, I'm going to pass to the next presenter, Duminta. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir and madam. My name is Duminta. I'll begin my presentation. First, I'll talk about the history of smart parking. So before the invention of smart parking, drivers have to find empty parking space manually. However, sometimes it may be difficult to find empty parking space, especially in populated cities. According to Borelli, the total number of vehicles registered in the United States is steadily increasing each year. The statistics also show that there were about 260 million vehicles in 2014 and it increased up to more than 276 million in 2019. Therefore, smart parking is introduced mainly to reduce the time and inconveniences taken to find an empty parking space. In 2002, the world's first smart parking system named Villafranca was invented and patented by Intercom SPA with its cooperation with vehicle sense. In 2005, the system was installed successfully. Next is the future trend of smart parking. One of the technology is the integration of smart parking with automated parking technology. Automated parking system is a mechanical system designed to minimize the area and amount of space to required to smart park and vehicle. It utilizes vertical parking spaces efficiently by stacking vehicles vertically on a rack, and the vehicles can be moved from one parking space to another. So the amount of cars that can be parked can be multiple times more than a normal parking system. People can expect this technology to help them park and retrieve the cars automatically in the future. Besides, more smart parking applications will be developed in the future. One of the examples of smart parking application is smart parking meter. Smart parking meter is equipped with sensors that use millimeter wave radar to detect occupied parking spaces in real time. The information from the smart parking meter can be retrieved through mobile application or web applications. It helps users to save time and improve traffic congestion. We can anticipate more innovative smart parking solutions coming in the near future. Now, I'm going to present about the problem statement. The first problem is insufficient parking slots. For example, in Utah campus, Although the campus did sell limited Utah vehicle stickers for the students, but this problem may still occur because most of the students are going to the same zone for their classes, especially on important days such as examination day, event day, and others. 
After that, the second problem is illegal parking. For example, in Utah campus, some students may park their vehicle in a restricted place when there is no empty parking stop. Parking in a restricted place is known as illegal parking, which is against the law and which and lead to punishment. The student will receive a penalty ticket and a vehicle will be locked by the security guard. If the situation is serious, illegal parking may cause accident too. Lastly, the third problem is wetting resources. The user will waste a lot of time when finding a parking slot. For example, in Utah campus, the user has to park their vehicle outside of the campus if there are no empty parking slots. In this case, they have to walk about 10 to 15 minutes, which is time consuming and waste of energy. Next, I'm going to talk about objective and proposed solution. The objective of this project is to develop a smart parking campus, smart campus tracking parking system that helps the driver to find the empty parking slot in campus. In this project, we will use our metal web services, AWS as the platform to provide services to the user. The user can check the availability of the parking slot in every zone through the web application. The services will show users how about the data such as amount of empty parking slot in a specific zone. Besides that, the user will receive the notification about the number of empty parking slot of that zone so they can make decision early to park with them. That's all for my presentation. Now I will pass to the next presenter. Thank you. This is the architecture diagram of our proposed solutions. The overall operation flow will be explained. First, an LED camera will be set up in the campus parking zone and it will capture an image of the parking zone every five minutes. This camera is connected to IoT core and a rule is created that will store the image file captured in an Azure bucket. Next, a Lambda function is created to retrieve the image file from the Azure bucket. Another Lambda function will use Amazon recognition to analyze the images. These functions are triggered when there are new images stored in the Azure bucket. We use Amazon recognition custom labels to train a model with dataset with a collection of parking zone images. After the training, the model is able to detect the number of vehicles in the parking zones. After that, the number of occupied vehicle slots will be updated in the parking lot table in Amazon DynamoDB and the number of empty vehicle slots will be calculated. Then another Lambda function will read the John ID and updated empty vehicle slots from the parking lot table in DynamoDB and store it as a message. The message will be sent as notification through email address to the user who subscribed to the topic in Amazon SMS. To send the notifications to be on a schedule, we set up a rule in AWS CloudWatch to run the Lambda functions every 24 hours. Lastly, Amazon Connector is used to create sign up and sign functions for the users. Hi, I'm Ok Chan, and I will discuss about the study of different cloud computing platforms. So, first of all, the AWS is also known as Amazon Web Services, and it is one of the popular online cloud platforms where it launched their services by year 2006. Besides that, uh, it also provides global cost effective and on demand solutions. Their key services, which include the area of uh, compute service, object storage, or content delivery, uh, with the respective service like uh, Amazon EC2, Amazon S3, Amazon CloudFront. So for their uh, cost pricing model, it includes uh, pay as you go, free tier, and also a uh, better offer for the discount uh, for huge uh, subscriber. And then uh, for their strength, is that uh, it's having huge market in terms of uh, infrastructure as a service and uh, platform as a service, and it's also uh, considered as a market leader in this cloud computing provider. But unfortunately, having the high fee for the intensive uh, assistance and the limitation of the resources in different uh, regions. So for the secondly, this is uh, Microsoft Azure. It belongs to a famous big tech company, which is uh, Microsoft. And as most of us will have experience with their product like uh, Microsoft Word and PowerPoint and etc. They start their cloud services from 2010, and it also considered as the second largest company in this field. Uh, for their key services factor is that they, are, they consider of uh, flexible, open, reliable, global, and economic services, so that uh, their user will get a better solution. So, uh, While well, for its cost is that uh, uh, it almost similar as a AWS, but their discount naming is just uh, slightly different. So for its strength is that they're having a high availability and uptime, and also having more existing users for its other product. And their weakness is that they lack of geographical distributed data center. Okay, now, now next. Uh, for finally, the Oracle Cloud is also known as Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. It's a new player compared to uh, AWS as well. And it launched it, uh, in 2016, which is slightly different to others. They provide more niche uh, services in uh, application layer. The key services which include the application development, uh, cloud infrastructure management, data and enterprise integration. So for their cost model is almost similar with others and every appeal is slightly different from others like uh, Oracle Universal Credit, bring your own license, Oracle supports reverse. 
And for Instagram, is that they it having a niche focus on their services, okay, more focus on application layer of uh, services. But their their limitation is that they having low performance in a uh, low end offering like infrastructure. So uh, this is the comparison of the three cloud platform technologies where the comparison is based on the services area, like our cloud storage uh, database function and et cetera. So we come to the conclusion part. So as a conclusion, our group have been successfully built a solution for the smart campus uh, parking tracking system by using the database component as uh, proposed in the architecture diagram. Moreover, for the image recognized model, accuracy is not uh, considered as a high accuracy model, but due to the uh, budget and time limit factors during the implementation time. Last but not least, for the final result of the functional result is that our system able to uh, store sample image in S3 and pass for analysis and also store the analyzed data in database. So finally, it's also able to uh, notify the AWS SNS topic subscriber between every five minutes for the available parking slot in the campus. So for the future work improvement uh, for our project, uh, first, it can be improved the system accuracy for the parking spot recognition by adding more training sample and testing sample. Moreover, the improvement of the system coverage for the parking zone. Since, uh, in this product, we only implement a, a, an example called Zone A in this uh, so in the future, it can be added more zones to the database. And finally, the system can be extended for its result presentation by using the mobile push instead of using email to get uh, the notification. Thank you. Uh, we will demonstrate the, our project now. Thank you. Hello, Dr. Michael and Dr. Aswani. My name is Lim Kaijian. So now I'm going to give a demonstration about our smart campus tracking parking system. So this is our architecture diagram. And I'm going to present and demo all of the AWS services that are used in this work except for the CrowdWatch and SNS service. The first part I demo about is the IoT call service and the S3 service. So first I will open the AWS website first. Okay, so now I log into my account. So let's go to IoT call first. So meanwhile, I open the S3 service first. So in our work, I will IoT, Cameron will send the data to the IoT call. And then the IoT call will uh, process the data and then send it to the S3. So now a demonstration will process of this. I will create a demo IoT camera. And then the camera will send data through the IoT call and then send it to the S3 bucket. Okay, so this APP will be our program to trigger the IoT call to send an image to the S3 bucket. This AV is a JavaScript file and it needs the Node.js to run. So I'll run it through the command prompt. Okay, first, you will change the directory to the virtual IoT camera, which is this app JavaScript file. Let's open this with a notepad. So actually, this information is our device information which is registered in the thing in the LD call. So let's go to the thing in our LD call, it was LD call. Okay. So as you can see that, we can see a client ID with test LD camera, and then we will have the same name with this. So now let's go to MQTT test client. So, and here we will have the same public subscription topic for this which is IoT slash capture card up. So auto subscribing and topic a thing or the MQDD client will receive a message when a thing or client publish a same topic. We will test this now. So I'll set the mass message capture to one then subscribe to topic. Okay. So actually this program is to publish and subscribe a LT slash capture cover topic. This program will publish a file content which is a car part test image. So let's try this by using Node.js. Uh, this unknown thing will be our images, but it cannot show in the command prompt. And so this, so later we'll see these images in the S3 management console, no, if we should S3 bucket. So we'll see that our MQT client will also receive the same message. So this is a bunch of code. Okay, so when we publish to topic, we'll see that our LT camera will also receive a message from this MQT client. Okay, so let's go to our S3 bucket. 
and we'll see that inside the S bucket then will be an image so we'll save the image in this group 7 bucket 1 so we can see that there will be an image in this bucket and the image name will be the timestamp so it won't be overridden by another images across the thinkers Okay, so the next thing I talk about will be the Dynamo DB. Okay, let's go find Dynamo DB first and close this LD call. Okay, so we'll go to a table that we created. So which is a parking slot. Then we go to S Rider. So in this table will have 10 attributes so which is 3 attributes for the total number of parking stop of each vehicle which is bicycle, car and motorcycle and 3 for the occupied parking slot okay also for the bike, motorcycle and the car and the last will be the total number of parking slot so which is also for bike, motorcycle and car and the main attribute will be the zone ID. So this zone ID will be the primary key in this table. So now we'll go to the recognition service. So let's find recognition service. Okay, for this service, we use our own custom labels, which means that we train the models with uh, some online source images. So let's go find our project first. Okay, so this is our project, so which is trained by these features in this file. So we only use seven features for training and only two images for testing because it's a bit time consuming. So even though we are using 10 images only, we take several hours to done the training process. So the model performance will be 0 0.724. So the next service I'm going to talk about is the AWS Conditor service. So let's go find the Conditor service. You only use the user pools to identify the users to access to the normal DB. So this normal DB will be the will have a restricted access. So only the person which register in the Conditor can access the normal DB. We have a callback URL, which is a website hosted in the S3 so I will show you now so we have this index html as a website to display our dynamo db so launch this okay so people can set up in this but in the real system the administrators can restrict how to sign up or sign up for the student themselves. The people cannot sign up themselves. I will just sign in. This is our sample HTML tables. So actually the real system will display as this. The show zone and the car slot left, motorcycle slot left and the bicycle slot left. So actually this is our, our sample data only. We didn't actually implement the real they are the normal DB to connect to the to this website. The last service we can talk about will be the lambda function. So in this, in our system, we have few lambda functions. So the first function is when the IoT call send an image message to the S3 bucket, it will trigger a function. And then this function will call the recognition module that we train it and then perform analysis. And then this lambda function will use the result to modify the database table in the DynamoDB. So the next function will be the function to modify the website data in the S3 and then it will display through the connector, which is the website that we show in this connector. And then the last function will be the CloudWatch function and SNF function. This part I will leave it to my friends. So let's close this. Let's go to the lambda. Here's a in the best lambda function service. The first function I'm gonna describe is about the lambda function that will modify the dynamo db when triggered by the S3. Let's do look at it. In our case, our recognition service did not done well since we only trained with seven samples and test with two samples only. Actually, the results is quite bad and cannot apply for it. This 
function will change the demo db data with a uh, dummy data. Let's go th to demo db and see how it change. This standard function will change uh, the six attribute of the tables, which is occupy car slots, occupy model slots, occupy bike slots, and also the car slot left, model slots left, and the bike slots left. Let's go to the demo db and see how it changed. Let's go to table, find our tables. Then explore tables item. So we can see that currently our byte slot left is 59, car slot left is 45, and the model slot left is 134. When we change the occupy slot, for example, change 40, 54, 36, and then click deploy, and we test our code. Okay, the code runs successfully, and then go to pull our table, then click the refresh. You can see that the value has changed. So this is how the function works. If in the real system, it will call the recognition module and then use the recognition to get the occupy car slot, occupy photo slot, and occupy back slots. It will be more accurate to have this data. Let's go to the second function. The second function will be the recognition function. So this recognition function can find in the Amazon recognition. Let's go open our project again. Then open our module. Then click on this module. We can see that the AWS actually provides the codes for us to use the module. So this is the main function. Just change the bug and the photo key and then you can use this module and it will provide a result for each label. Okay, so that's all for my part and now I'm gonna start the module. Thank you. Now I will demonstrate the Amazon Super Notification Service. First, we have to create a topic in SNS. So this is the topic that I've created. Then we can create subscription to subscribe to the topic. We have to confirm the subscription to the email address that we enter. After we subscribe to the topic, we should be able to get notifications. So this is my email and I have already subscribed to the topic. Next, we go to the Lambda function. So we have some code here. This function will read the data from the DynamoDB and send notification to users. It is triggered by CloudWatch events, which is now named Event Bridge. So a rule is created to run this function once every 24 hours. Now I will try to execute the Lambda function to see the result. Then we go to our email. As we can see, I've received notification about the empty parking slots. That's all for SNS. Thank you.